Who is the most plausible primary supplier of materials for the massive global climate engineering Manhattan project that's so blatantly taking place in skies around the world? Who's supplying the highly toxic geoengineering elements that lab tests prove are raining down through our breathable air column, where these elements are inhaled and absorbed by every single one of us in the entire web of life? The purpose of this short video is to present available facts that connect the American Elements Corporation with the U.S. military, with every known defense industry climate engineering contractor, and the exact primary elements named in climate engineering patents, starting with aluminum and barium nanoparticulates. In this excerpt from the American Elements Corporation mission statement, take note of their stated objective to create a sustainable planet. Might this be a reference to the ongoing geoengineering solar radiation management programs? Follow me through the facts presented in this video and decide for yourself. Let's consider all the entities that American Elements supplies materials to. Materials that include aluminum and barium nanoparticulates held in solution for facilitating easier dispersions. The list of corporations and government agencies the American Elements Corporations is thanking as their patrons looks like a who's who of all those that are in one way or another primary participants in the ongoing covert climate engineering operations. The ongoing global climate engineering programs are inarguably the most immense, intensive, and destructive endeavor ever launched by the human race. Why wouldn't the world's largest metals and chemicals manufacturer be a core part of the operations, given the fact that they are the world's largest producer of aluminum nanoparticulates, and given the fact that the world's most recognized geoengineers have stated, on the record, the goal of putting an unimaginable 20 million tons of aluminum nanoparticulates into the atmosphere annually. How could the world's largest metals and chemicals manufacturer not be a part of supplying the materials to the massive climate engineering programs? Let's consider some of the primary materials that the American Elements Corporation processes, produces, and supplies to entities like the U.S. National Laboratories, military branches, aerospace, the defense industry, and universities throughout the world, in their own words. To make distribution more efficient, American Elements has production facilities worldwide. Such a distribution network would certainly be essential in order to supply so much materials to so many aircraft origination locations that are used for the climate engineering operations. This statement from American Elements also stresses their ability to produce, quote, customer proprietary formulations worldwide. What kind of formulations does American Elements Corporation provide to their defense industry and military patrons? Elements that are primary components named on climate engineering patents. The same elements that are showing up in massive quantities in lab tests of precipitation all over the world. American Elements Corporation produces aluminum nanoparticulates that can be suspended in a surfactant solution. Such a solution would facilitate sprayed dispersions. More on surfactants in a moment. American Elements also produces barium nanoparticulates that can also be suspended in a surfactant solution, which facilitates again spray dispersions. Barium is a primary element named in climate engineering patents. Extreme quantities of barium have also showed up in precipitation lab tests from all over the world. If these materials are in the rain, they're in the breathable air column, which means every single one of us is inhaling this extremely dangerous nanoparticulate concoction. If solutions of surfactants are indeed used to suspend the nanoparticulate formulations in order to facilitate spray dispersions, we would expect to see occasional occurrences of foaming in precipitation runoff or along ocean shorelines where the agitation of the waters in which these materials have been introduced is, under the right conditions, producing a surface foaming effect. The increasing incidences of foaming oceans and runoff areas is a hallmark red flag of surfactants. Coastlines around the world are constantly paralleled by climate engineering jet aircraft. The sprayed dispersions coming from these aircraft are a probable attempt to carry out marine layer enhancement programs. This is another form of the ongoing and highly toxic geoengineering and solar radiation management. 
Though official sources excuse away the ocean foaming as being the result of natural ocean processes, then why do we increasingly see again the same foaming occurring in freshwater runoff under the right conditions? Are we to believe official sources, the same sources who adamantly deny the blatant climate engineering spraying we can see in the skies day in and day out? The fact that the American Elements Corporation is actively colluding and cooperating with the U.S. military is no secret either, even as this Wikipedia excerpt reveals. Now let's examine some unpleasant realities that most Americans are not yet willing to face or admit to. Realities that are ultimately connected to the American Elements Corporation. The U.S. military is not about spreading freedom and democracy anymore. Rather, the U.S. military is being used as a mercenary force for a completely out of control fascist power structure that's consuming the planet. Though recent mainstream media headlines would have us believe that the power structure has no idea about the vast mineral wealth in Afghanistan, this is of course a lie that's proven by reporting that goes back many years. Note that Michael Silver, the CEO of American Elements Corporation, is the very individual that supposedly broke the news of the Afghan mineral wealth to Trump. We're all swimming in a sea of lies and criminal corruption. Are we to believe that the U.S. military industrial complex and Mr. Trump just now learned of the Afghan mineral wealth, even though independent media sources have been reporting on it for many years? Note the date on this article and consider that there was reporting on the Afghan mineral wealth many years even before this article was written. And just for the record, there's the opiate epidemic that has been fueled by the primary drug sources that the U.S. military is protecting in Afghanistan. So is Michael Silver just an enterprising individual that is okay with producing toxic climate engineering elements for governments around the globe, or is Mr. Silverman just the face of a CIA covert corporation. It seems Mr. Silver is an advocate for hostile government takeovers of private assets. And again, for the record, there's no public stock available for American Elements Corporation. Thus, they don't have to disclose any financial information about their corporation to the public. Another point of interest in regard to Mr. Silver and the startup of American Elements Corporation is the date of the startup, which happened in the late 90s, with facilities again in the US and China and other parts of the world. Why is this of interest? Because 1998 was a record-shattering year for global temperatures. Available data indicates that this is the year geoengineering was radically ramped up, though the climate engineering operations had been conducted since the mid-1940s. The late 90s climate engineering expansion, of course, fueled the need for climate engineering elements like those already described. This is also the year when the term climate change was implemented and pushed. Why? Because the climate engineers needed a term that would be more conducive to conditioning the public to extreme weather whiplash scenarios that they knew their programs would increasingly create. Here's a point that should have us all pondering exactly who and what Michael Silver, the CEO of American Elements Corporation, is. Though Mr. Silver somehow finds himself as the head of the world's largest supplier of metals and chemicals, he has no formal education in these fields. What field does Mr. Silver have a degree in? Psychobiology. Given the toxic metals that we know his company produces, Given the fact that we know from lab testing that these materials, like aluminum and barium, are raining down through the breathable air column, and given the fact that we know what these materials do to human neurological and biological systems, should we be alarmed by Mr. Silver's specialty of study? A few more historical facts for those that are trying to deny that our own government conducts open air tests with dire biological implications over innocent civilian U.S. populations. If you don't think this is occurring, think again. And while examining this article excerpt, consider that it is from 1977. How much more powerful and how much more out of control is our military today? Exactly how big is our military? A military that's perhaps supplied by the American Elements Corporation in the case of geoengineering. How much funding does our military receive annually? 
almost as much as the rest of the world's militaries combined. It's time for anyone with any interest in preserving any future whatsoever for their children or themselves to stand up and help to sound the alarm on the critical climate engineering issue. The criminally insane individuals that currently run the power structure could not do what they do without legions of order followers that are just, quote, doing their jobs. To those that know they are order followers, look in the mirror and ask yourself what you want to be found doing when you take your last breath, a moment that's much closer than anyone yet comprehends if we remain on the current course. If you know order followers, pass credible data onto them and hold them morally accountable. If we don't change course today, we'll not have tomorrow, none of us. The fight to expose and halt the ongoing atmospheric spraying and associated microwave transmissions is a fight for life, nothing less. Compelling and credible climate engineering informational materials can be found on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org. Help us to share those materials far and wide. Help us to wake the masses. Help us to alter the course of the Titanic on which we are all currently passengers. Make your voice heard in this epic battle for the greater good while it can still make a difference. This is Dane Wigington with geoengineeringwatch.org.